Welcome back guys, I'm Zell and today we're doing another Drinking and Thinking with Zell. So you've got nine seconds to get your drink of choice and I'll be right back with you. <laughs> Alright guys, in sharp news, CRKT has released the first folding knife in the Forge by War series. If you don't know about that series, these are knives that are designed by people that have actually found a reason that they need to make a design change and uh, found it in combat or in war. So that's why they're called Forged by War. So even if you're not interested in the knife, I suggest you go over and read the article about the knife. It is pretty neat and it's linked below. That goes over to Knife News. Secondly, Everyday Commentary has released the retraction that was part of the deal with Microtech. Uh, so you should probably go read that. It kind of clears the air a little bit. Now, a follow-up to what we've talked about already. Microtech and Kai are still, you know, in their little legal, legal kerfluffle. And uh, guys, please, let's get that straightened out. I don't I think it's going to happen soon. I figure that one's going to get drug on. But... Uh, Let's get that straightened out, and let's come to some sort of agreement, and let's do something for the community together out of it, guys. Because we really, really don't need you guys fighting. Uh, we don't need the fanboy and fangirlism to cause problems with you guys and in the community. So please come together, do something for the community together. That's what I'm asking for from you guys, uh, from Microtech and Kai Industries. And, uh, you know, it could be a beautiful thing. It could be awesome. Let, let's think about this and let's not be silly. Anyhow, that's about it for Sharp News. Uh, we do have some videos, though, this week. First up is Spring Hammer. It's a, about an hour-long documentary about Japanese knife making. And uh, it's kind of a history thing, and I haven't got to watch the whole thing yet, but I will. And if you're at all interested, you should go too. I've watched about 20 or 30 minutes of it, and it's well done. Uh, part of it is in Japanese, and you have to read the subtitles if, you're, if you speak English, not Japanese. And part of it is in English, and it's, like I said, it's well done. Give it a watch. Second up is Simple Little Life, and Jeremy over there has done a couple of things this week. First up, he released a new Viewer Knives video. If you haven't seen that, that's where people that watch the channel that have made one of their first few knives send it in to Jeremy. He talks about it a little bit and puts it on screen. And that's actually a beautiful thing. Even if you don't plan on ever sending a knife picture to Jeremy, which I may. I've got a knife I may send in to Jeremy. Because uh, why not? But what it does do is if you're a maker or a consumer, it lets you see where the mind of people is going. It lets you see what people are thinking, how they're designing things, and it may give you some ideas or may show you something that you want. You may discover a new maker. Lots of cool things that happens with his uh, Viewer Knives videos. The second thing is, is he made the Fidget Spinner of Doom. Not kidding. Go watch the video. It's very Doomtastic. And then we've got Cedric. Cedric has done a video review of one of the knives that you guys have asked me for several times, and I just can't get behind it unless one of you guys want to send me one in to review, and I'll sharpen it up and send it back to you. But uh, the Bombastic from CRKT, uh, Cedric has done a full review of that guy and a well-done review. So if you're interested at all in that knife, get over there and watch it. And then, of course, Walter freaking Sorrels. Walter comes up with what is probably, if he sold them, the most expensive pair of nucks, set of nucks, so far. And, uh, uh, you just have to go watch the video. It's a Walter Sorrels thing. Anyhow, that's all we've got this week. Everybody's kind of hunkered down in the shop and grinding and... Uh, milling and all those sorts of things so there's just not a lot of news out there but I've been doing the same thing so we're gonna go to a camera down view and I've got some stuff to show you all right guys no big philosophical question today uh, no gripes no 
fussing about anything. I just wanted to let you guys in on what I've been doing over the past few weeks whenever I've had time away from my other obligations. If you follow the Instagram, if you haven't, you should. It's down there in the description uh, below all the video and uh, article links. This is what I've been up to. I've been grinding knives. Now, these were all ground on a jig I made that worked out really pretty good, actually, to start with. But, uh, you know, this one ended up being a bit stubby, and this guy will probably go in the used knives bin or the junk knives bin. Uh, but it worked pretty good, and I was pretty happy with it. Uh, I, I Everything was going great, but I was noticing problems, and I went last night to grind some knives and I started with this guy it's a slightly bigger version of the RP1 we're gonna call this one an RP3 and I went out there and I'm grinding along and everything's going great with the jig which takes like 20 minutes to set up and I got a really beautiful grind on one side flipped it over and it was all sorts of wrong and I was getting all sorts of upset I tried straightening it out, I tried doing things, and it just wasn't working. So I got a little mad, and I pulled that jig out of the grinder, and I lightly tossed it out into the yard. Uh, no worries, it hit the grass, landed softly, and I did go back and pick it up later and clean it up and rub it down and tell it it was okay, and it'll be useful for other things. But uh, I did kind of lightly toss it out in the yard forcefully. And I stepped back to the grinder. And I said, okay, so this is something that you've got to learn. If you're going to make knives, you've got to learn to hollow grind without all of the aids. I tried to over-engineer it. That's my background. That's what I do. And I tried to overdo it. Uh, I tried to make it foolproof, which I still can. I've just got to take a bunch of those adjustments out. I had like a half, half a dozen, dozen adjustments. I don't remember exactly. And I need to get that down to like three. But anyhow, I step back up to the grinder, and I push this knife up against the grinder, and I started grinding. And to begin with, it looked awful. I told myself, just keep going. It started to look a little better. And then it started to look a lot better. And then I got to looking at it, and I had a nice, pretty bevel. And uh, this is very rough ground. That's why we still got some oxidation here, and uh, and why it just looks rough. Because all I've done is rough grind it and profile it, rough grind the bevels, and put my holes in the tang of the knife. And the bevels turned out pretty darn good. You can see down there. There's some stuff I've got to fix once I do the final grind. But kind of the moral to the story here is learn how to do it. Don't always look for the aids. I'll probably rebuild that thing or weld up some of the adjustments where there are fewer things to go wrong because it could be very useful in certain situations. But for the most part, uh, once I got a, got the hang of the grinding, it wasn't too bad. Now, this one, I thought, whenever I finished, I thought, well, that's a fluke. You'll never pull that off again. So I looked over there on the workbench, and I had this guy. It's an RP1 that's got a little thicker handle that I did to facilitate uh, getting holes more in the right place. And I started grinding on it. And what do you know? I was able to grind another pretty nice bevel. So I flipped it over and thought, well... You've run out of luck now. But no. I was able to grind one more pretty nice bevel. Now the next piece of steel I stick up against the grinder will probably end up in the uh, junk metal bin. But uh, I had ground two bevels, both sides of two bevels, by hand. Well, okay, so three, bevel, three sides. One was done with the jig, but I did have to go back and straighten it up. And it worked well. I'm, I'm learning. So let's get these guys out of the way and let's look at a finished knife real quick and explain why they're called RPs. All right, so this is the base design for the RP1. Some things are gonna change. 
because of things I've learned, but this is going to be the base shape of the knife. Uh, and the reason it's shaped this way is because if you've ever looked at a large dog's paw, I mean, I'm talking bull mastiff, uh, Burmese mountain dog, St. Bernard, uh, something big with big meaty paws, big, I don't know, look at a bull mastiff's paw sometime. They're just big, firm paws. And I was looking around at some dog pictures whenever we were thinking about getting Nixie. And I was looking at Prescanarios and Mastiffs and Bull Mastiffs and all kinds of other dogs. And I saw one picture, and I don't know who to give credit to this for because it was just on a website somewhere, of just a dog's paw sitting out there. And I had been looking at pictures and drawing knives at the same time, and I kind of made a sketch of it, of that dog's paw. And uh, I transferred it over to cardboard, made a couple of alterations, and this is what I come up with. And I cut it out, and I put my hand around it, and I was like, hey, that works pretty darn good. Now, are there other knives out there with very similar designs? I'm sure there are. That's just how I came up with this one. And the reason it's called a wristy paw, or an RP1, is because it's the first design, this about a two inch blade, uh, small knife, necker knife, and also I'm gonna make a holster that uh, you should be able to put it in your back pocket or your front pocket with, and extract the knife and put it back down in the holster without, hopefully without cutting yourself or anything else. Uh, so it's the first design, and Risty was a bull mastiff that passed away last year, and she was a very special dog here at Todd, Todd Knife and Tool, Tilt Blades, uh, Susie Nails It, uh, Todd Knife and Cakes, and all the kids. It was She was just super special to everybody. So I thought we would kind of name the knife in remembrance of her. And the other thing, guys, I'm going to be making a few of these. If anybody is interested you know, kind of let me know. Uh, I don't know when they're going to be available. I've got Blade Show coming up. I've got a gazillion reviews to get done. And I've kind of got to balance all that stuff a little bit. But uh, there will be some of these available in the next several weeks uh, once I get the sheath designs kind of straightened out. Now, the neck necker sheath, that's no big deal. Those are plenty easy to do. But uh, for the other sheath, that may take a few weeks and a few tries to get that thing right. But anyhow, guys, I really appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me. This is the RP-1 from Tilt Blades and Todd Knife and Tool. And uh, it's kind of a neat little neck knife, at least I think so. Of course, I'm the one that designed it, so... Let me know what you think. And you guys have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.